All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is you're gonna find these special like little hanging stands somewhere in my classroom. If you're not sure where it's at, just let me know, I'll point them out for you. And it looks like an L shape with a screw sticking out the end. This is gonna help you with your final assembly with your project. So for this next step, you're gonna need one of those, clamp it in a vise just like I did here. Then that little metal ring that we did earlier with our project, we're actually gonna take it and slip it right over that nail and it's gonna hold everything nice and steady and true just like this. Our next step for what we wanna do is we're actually gonna go through the process of hanging our chimes right off of the little eyelets around the bottom. Now, when we're doing this, we wanna make sure that we're gonna be attaching to the three on the outside. Don't touch the one in the center just yet. We're gonna save that for last. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start attaching our chimes. It doesn't matter which length chime that you're using out of your three that we're making for our project or have made, um, just pick one. You might need a partner to help you with this because it does get tricky, but if you're pretty good with your hands and have some patience, you can definitely do this yourself. You're also gonna need a ruler that can measure in inches so we can measure the gap and try to get things at least close. So first step, we're gonna find one of the eyelets on the outside of our project, feed the chime through, and we're just gonna pull it through until we get it about, I'd say three inches of a gap. The trick is if you're doing this by yourself, hold this still with one hand. I like to grip the pipe in my one hand and then take my fingers and pinch this side. And then you're gonna take your ruler and measure the distance between the bottom of this hanging plate and the top of your chime. So for us, we're gonna make ours at three inches. So try to get it as close as you can. And this is when a partner comes into play because they can actually hold either the chime or the ruler where you adjust. After you get it at that sweet spot, we're gonna pinch it at the top. And then with our other hand, we're gonna take the string. We're gonna hold it, very carefully knot it once. And then we're gonna knot it a second time. And after you knot it a second time, pull it nice and tight and taut so it doesn't go anywhere. After we get the one hung, at this point you can take a pair of scissors and we're gonna leave a small little tail, not a big one. And we're just gonna cut off the extra that's left over and throw this in the trash can. After we get one hung, we're gonna go around to the other side and do the same exact thing. And we're gonna do this two more times. Now, after we get our second one hung, the thing that you definitely want to make sure that you do is that both of these are nice and even, nice and parallel. So before you tie your second knot on your second one, it's a good idea just to take a ruler and double check. It looks like right there, I ended up at like three and a quarter on this one, which means this other one should be three and a quarter. So I need to actually take this one and slip it down a little bit so we can loosen the knot up and just move it down just a smidge so that way they're nice and even and they're not hanging at different heights. So the next thing I'm gonna do is anywhere where I had these little tails that are left over um, after I tied it, and there should be like maybe about half an inch to like three quarters of an inch sticking off. I'm gonna take my soldering iron and just fuse these little ends very carefully. So just take your iron, just touch them very carefully on the ends and fuse them all around. So whatever you do to one side, go through to the other and do the same thing. And if you have to take your project off the stand to do this, you can very easily do that. Finally, 
we're going to go through and do the final assembly for the striker as well as we will eventually get to the wind sail as well so just hold tight on that so for this you're going to need two pieces of string that we've been using same stuff one piece is going to be a little bit longer this one is two feet long the other one is going to be one foot long so the first thing that we're actually going to do is it doesn't matter which side you pick you're going to either pick the top of this little fastener we made with the string or the wire or the bottom and then we're going to take the short piece and tie it off just like we did before with our other pieces and when you do this again like i said make sure that when you pull this tight you do a triple knot on these little single ones so we'll do it once twice and then finally three times. And if you don't have enough of a tail to do this, it sticks out, no big deal. You can just pull the knot apart and do it over again. After we get that one foot piece attached, we're gonna switch gears, go to the opposite side, and we're gonna take our two foot piece and attach that to the opposite side. Same exact way. tails that are left over we're just going to trim them back a little bit and then eventually we're going to use a soldering iron to go through the process of fusing the end so they don't fray on us so take your pair of scissors trim just a little bit off but not too much and then you're going to flip it around and do the same thing to the tail on the opposite side take your scissors trim it off once we're done with that if you have one of these available like i said it's optional but it definitely helps we're going to take our soldering iron and very carefully touch it to the tip of our string and fuse it. Next, we're going to take the short side, the one that well, is one foot long, not the long. If you do the long, it's going to mess this up. The short side, we're going to take the end. And remember, you should have a hole in your wind sail like we punched earlier in class. We're going to thread it through the hole, pull it through so there's a decent amount of the tail sticking out, loop it around, and then like we did before with our other ones when we were attaching the string to the striker, we're just going to triple knot it. Finally, the last thing that we're going to do is trim off the tail and then we want to fuse it just like we did before with the soldering iron, if possible. If you don't have one, no big deal. Take your scissors, leave a little bit extra left off, trim it, and then if you have one, very carefully take the soldering iron, touch it to the tip, and just fuse it. Final step of our project, and then we're pretty much all wrapped up, is attaching your assembly that has your string, your striker, and then your wind sail. Now, there is a specific way you need to do this or else you will not get the right sound out of your wind chimes. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our one end of our string, put it through the center eyelet, and we're just gonna pull it up so the striker now is right in the middle of all these three chimes. Now, if you look this up, the ideal strike zone is actually near the bottom or at the very top or somewhere in between. If you have it right here at the hanging point, you're not gonna have a really good sound. If you have it kind of like a little bit off, it'll sound better. But your best bet is to find your like shortest chime, which in my case will be this one. And we're just gonna have the striker be a little bit higher than that actual chime itself, just like this. So once you get that to the exact spot that you want, you're gonna hold it still and tie it at the top.
Finally, the very last step, we're gonna take that extra piece that was hanging off. We're gonna leave a small tail, take our scissors and snip it. And then again, if you have a soldering iron, great. If not, no big deal. We're gonna take our soldering iron and just very carefully fuse the end of that string so it doesn't fray. So after that, congratulations. Your project's all finished and assembled and you did it.